Hello everyone, welcome back to Lab for Crypto. Today we are going to have a discussion about net and realized profit and loss. I'm going to use Bitcoin as an example, but of course in the platform you will be able to find more assets to explore. If you like the video, please do not forget to give us a thumbs up and leave a comment as that will help the algorithm to show our content to more people. Let's dive in. The past week was crazy for the crypto market. Bitcoin managed to briefly break its all-time high, then dropped by 15%, then bounced back. And as we are in a region close to the previous all-time high, we have two camps of investors. The one camp believes that Bitcoin should go to a new all-time high before the halving, and people that uh, that are on the other side that believe Bitcoin should go to a lower prices to have all the leverage trades flash out, uh, remove the people that came only for speculative reasons, and then go to new all-time highs after the rate cuts. And the short and the long-term answer to these two comes is, is something that I'm going to try to answer at the end of the video. After we explore the NUPL graph, as we don't know if the buying pressure for, for, from the spot ETFs is going to continue with the same rate, if BlackRock, Fidelity, and all spot ETFs continue to have inflows, for example, this is BlackRock, and you can see day by day they are increasing their uh, spot ETF holdings. Grayscale, on the other hand, is dropping. Is we have the outflows, the continuation of the outflows. Fidelity, and in general, the newborns have a net inflow each day on their ETFs. But we don't know if this buying pressure from spot ETFs first is going to continue with the same rate when they are going to start to see some profit realization, if we are going to see that, how an inelastic asset like Bitcoin will act after a halving when we have a huge buying pressure from the spot ETFs. And therefore, it's better to see the data that we have now, what Bitcoin did in the last 12 to 14 years that exists, try to make a plan based on the data that we have currently. And in the end, a wise strategy is to hedge in both sides. But I will talk a little bit about that in the end. Let's first see the NUPL graph. Let's have a look on the equation of the NUPL and then come back to the graph and see what information we can get that can help us make an informed decision about our next move. The NUPL is equal to the market cap of Bitcoin in this example, minus the realized cap and then divide by the market cap. The difference between the market cap and the realized cap is something that I explain in detail in my MBRV video, and I will have a link in the description below. But in short, the market cap of Bitcoin is calculated based on the circulating supply of Bitcoin multiplied by the price. So today, the market cap of Bitcoin is one is one point twenty nine trillion, because we have nineteen point sixty five million Bitcoin in circulation, and we multiply that by the current price of Bitcoin, which is sixty six point one, and we get the value that you see on the market value, the market cap of Bitcoin. The realized cap now is calculated differently. The realized cap of Bitcoin is calculated based on the price that Bitcoin had when it was last moved. As if imagine that I was paid for something that I did today and the price of Bitcoin was 66K, just for simplicity, I'm rounding up. That means I was happy to be paid 
for my work with one Bitcoin and the value of my work was worth at that time 66 k and also me and the guy that was willing to pay me both agreed that one bitcoin was enough for my work that means in my mind one bitcoin worth 66k and also the guy that paid me also thinks the same therefore the price of bitcoin is basically measured by the market the people that they actually exchange it and even in the short term we see bitcoin go to 100 100k and then drop to 20 for example in my mind and also the guy that it paid me the price the fair value of bitcoin was 66k because i was willing to receive one bitcoin and he was willing to give me that one bitcoin but for more in-depth understanding of the market value and the realized value as i said i have a link in the description below let's go back to the nupl and go to the to the information that we can get and identify if bitcoin is reaching a local top or not the red line is the nupl and the blue line is the price of bitcoin on the y-axis on the right side we have the nupl value and on the y-axis on the left side we have the price of bitcoin but as i mouse over you see the two values the immediate observation that we can make is that in some cases the nupl is negative and that means we have people that have unrealized losses that means they received bitcoin at a higher price in the blockchain than the actual price of bitcoin that was on that day for example at the bottom of bitcoin in november 2022 you will see the nupl hovering at 0 0.19 0 0.22 and in short after the 2017 top we saw the nupl go to negative prices at the bottom of bitcoin also this is the covid crash and then again at uh, the bottom of bitcoin in 2022 the NUPL value was at prices close to 0 0.2. That is a good indicator also for bottoms. But now we are more interested at the top. You will see on the NUPL value on December 2017, which was the top of Bitcoin, the NUPL value was 0 0.77. If we go to the last to the first peak of bitcoin in 2021 the value was 0 0.74 and on the second peak in november 2021 it was 0 0.63 65 close to this region therefore usually when we see these high prices of net unrealized profit this indicates that there is a high selling pressure in the market and this selling pressure comes from the fact that our people which acquire bitcoin at the lower prices and now they are sinking in a profit and as we go the current value is 0 0.60 0 0.62 and two days ago was 0 0.64 where, where we, it was our rejection as a result from the previous data that we have between 0 0.65 0 0.65 and 0 0.74 we tend to see the cycle top or the local top of bitcoin as some may say that bitcoin can drop now and then see prices go to close to 100k which is something that i believe as well but definitely the market due to the hype of the spot etfs the halving can go to a bit to be a bit extended and therefore the selling pressure is high and that is immediately observable if we see the difference between the orange line and the blue line when we have this huge deviation between the two lines usually we tend to be overextended and then we come to values closer to the realized curve the nupl just give us the number so it will be easier for us to understand and i will come to my to my thoughts 
if you found it helpful. As definitely we have a lot of models that signal that Bitcoin is starts to become a bit overheated, not that it reached its top, but it's in the process of going the new PL here is going inside the 0 0.65 and 75 region that we are tend to see Bitcoin go. You can see the uh, free flow, the MVRV, the MVRV score, and a lot of indicators, and also our indicator, the price vs risk, is signaling that Bitcoin is in a 70.81% risk, which means we are not at the 100%, which someone immediately thinks that this is the top, but definitely we start to become overheated. And I know that a lot of people think that the spot ETF impact will continue to bring positive price action to Bitcoin, but I want to clarify that no one knows. So do not believe anyone that is telling you what is gonna come to the future, because literally we don't know. This is the first time that we have Bitcoin um, have a Bitcoin as an institutional asset, which means institutions through the spot ETF now can buy Bitcoin. And note that also Bitcoin is the first asset which is inelastic, which means even if the demand continues, we cannot produce more Bitcoin. And that means we can see crazy prices for Bitcoin if the demand continues. And that's why we have built the dashboard for our users to daily check the total net inflows, compare the grayscale and the newborn ETF values. But in short, we don't know what's going to happen in the Bitcoin future because we don't have data to analyze. It's something new. But what we have is the previous price action of Bitcoin and you can hedge yourself in both ways. For example, you can DCA, some, DCA out some amount of BTC now as we start to become overheated, a small percentage if you believe that Bitcoin is going to go to higher prices. And in case that Bitcoin go to a lower prices and then goes to the 100k or 150k that we expect, you will be hedged in both ways. It's better to manage your risk and sleep better at night when you know that you believe in an asset as Bitcoin, therefore you have some of your portfolio into Bitcoin, but also in case that Bitcoin drops to lower prices before it goes to the 120, 50 price predictions that we see, you can be uh, hedged in both ways. You can take advantage both scenarios. And this is the importance of monitoring everything every day. As the difference from someone that tries to maximize their portfolio is someone that has data and can analyze. And on the other side, is someone that without knowing what's happening and when he or she sees the, pri the price volatility of the crypto market freaks out and panic sell or panic buy and you see this FOMO. And through the platform, you will be able to get this data every day and be able to start to make decisions more confident confidently. I hope I explained the NUPL and also brought to our attention that we are starting to become a bit overheated. By no means is not the, the top if we compared with previous data, but it's better to be hedged in both sides and have a plan. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked it. Do not forget to give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. Until next time, bye-bye.